Our front yard is a Monarch way station. We named it Monarch Nirvana. It didn't start as a Monarch way station or as a native plant pollinator garden. The story of Monarch Nirvana begins in the spring of 2013. My oldest son came home one day from second grade to tell me we need to plant milkweed. He had learned at his Fairfax County Public School that monarchs are in danger, but we could save them by planting milkweed in our garden. He taught me that milkweed is the host plant for monarchs. Surprisingly, I didn't know this even though I grew up in the Chicago area and enjoyed monarchs all summer long. We didn't have milkweed in our yard in Chicago, but we did have native perennials that provided nectar for monarchs and other pollinators. It occurred to me that I had never seen monarchs in our yard in Oakton, and I assumed they didn't exist in this area. So my son and I went to a local nursery, but at the time, the only milkweed they sold was swamp milkweed. We bought a few and planted them in a sunny spot along the driveway. They bloomed, but we didn't see any monarchs, monarch caterpillars, or chrysalis. Unfortunately, they didn't reappear the following spring, so we went to Earth Sangha and bought five common milkweed. They did well, but we didn't see any monarchs, caterpillars, or chrysalis that first year. The following spring, eight milkweed plants appeared, then 12, and then they started popping up all over our yard. We invited friends and neighbors, handed them a shovel to dig them out of the grass, and instructed them to take the common milkweed home and plant it. Three years after planting the common milkweed, we saw monarchs, caterpillars, and chrysalis in our yard for the first time. We go outside to hunt for caterpillars and chrysalis on the large milkweed leaves. That year, we added a few more native plants along our driveway. At that point, I started having a vision for our front yard. In that vision, there was constant movement by butterflies, bees, and other insects. Simultaneously, I learned that the manicured grass lawn preferred by many homeowners in this area provides little or no benefit to local wildlife and is almost completely devoid of ecological value. I also learned that the most popular plants for landscaping in this area are non-native and sometimes even invasive. The idea of removing the grass, the non-native plants, and the invasive plants from our landscaping and replacing them with native plants crossed my mind, but it would be expensive. When I learned about the Virginia Conservation Assistance Program, VCAP, administered here in Fairfax County through the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District, it was exactly the nudge I needed to implement my plan of a grass-free front yard that was constantly buzzing with pollinators enjoying native plants. We invited a few landscape designers and decided on Elisa Mira. She asked what we wanted to achieve with our native garden. First and foremost, we wanted to attract pollinators and birds. We also wanted a variety of colors, sizes, shapes, and textures. We wanted interesting berries, and we wanted appeal throughout the year, not just during the peak summer months. The installation was a massive effort that involved removal of all of the grass in front of our house, removal of large non-native azaleas, boxwood, and other non-native shrubs, and planting of hundreds of plugs or tiny plants. Some plants were just two to four inches tall, seemed extremely fragile, and looked so tiny, I wasn't sure they would survive. Not only did they survive, but after a few weeks of watering, they started to grow much bigger. That first year, we started seeing many of the butterflies and insects you see in the slideshow. Last summer, I had the great fortune to watch and film a monarch caterpillar turn into a chrysalis. It takes less than two minutes. And the following month, I saw a monarch close or emerge from its chrysalis. I saw the monarch's wings drip dry, and then I watched it fly away. Another really amazing scene was to watch an American lady butterfly lay eggs on pussy toes plants. I didn't see the egg hatch as a caterpillar, but I did see the caterpillar wrap itself in a pussy toes leaf, using its silk to create what looks like a white tent for protection. Over the past few years, I've seen firsthand how native plants are perfectly adapted to local conditions, particularly compared to turf grass that is so popular throughout Northern Virginia. I've also enjoyed the fact that native plants require far less water, less maintenance, 
no mowing, no leaf blowing, and no chemical pesticides and fertilizers. We hope you enjoyed this slideshow as much as we enjoy Monarch Nirvana and the wildlife it attracts. Thanks to the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District for making this native plant pollinator garden possible. We hope you decide to plant a native garden. I think you'll be surprised by the entertainment value it provides. Thank you so much for listening.